Welcome to another edition of the Gentleman Grachowski Show. We're having a great time here at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 North Halstead, and we are celebrating Irish Whiskey Fest here. And this episode is going to be a great episode. We're going to find out some information about Irish whiskey from all over the world, or at least from Ireland, right? Which is the, across the, the world. The island of Ireland. The island of Ireland across the world. And we're going to find out more about that. And then we got a representative from Guinness going to talk to us yes. about the, the beer Guinness. And we got a great performance by uh, Joe. Babin. Yep. That's so right. That, that's going to be something exciting to check out on this episode of the show. Yo, Joe. No, but listen, uh, Part yeah. his first time experiencing uh, Irish whiskey, he enjoyed it, and he ch- tends to, to really, especially around the St. Patrick's Day, the month of March, you tend to really enjoy uh, Irish whiskey, right? Yeah, that's the perfect month to enjoy it. And one thing that you said you liked about Irish whiskey in the past is it goes down smooth. Yeah, smooth, and it makes the night just settle within the, you're settling in the moment. Yeah, and one thing Partee likes to do because he's always party time. He's selling in a moment. Is par- party time likes to be in the moment, as we say. Oh, yes. Amen. Say your line. A, a broken clock is only right two times a day, but party time is right twenty four seven, baby. Twenty four seven, and you gotta say it, baby, like you mean it, baby. You, you got to, because there's only one direction I go, and that's straight forward. Now we're straight forward. We're, we're spring is in the air now today, my friend. Uh, man, it is so beautiful, man. In the fifties. Now what's cool is that Chicago, we you never you always take a, a nice day in the in the early spring for granted, or we call it the late winter, because you never know, especially in March, you get that the, the old wife's tale is what uh, March comes in like a lion and out like a lamb, oh my goodness. or out in like a, a lamb and out like a lion, which it, refers to it goes into nice mild weather which we're experiencing right now. Oh yes. But there's also that snowstorm waiting just to get us right when we're getting our. Uh, um, our spring gear ready to go. Yes, and it also comes a time when you also add a salt. Yeah, well, definitely salt. Then you got to run to the uh, local store or the local department store and go get uh, two bags of salt. There you go. It happens all the time. And what's always also is uh, people have salt, and then guess what? They don't use it. That's you either have no salt or just enough salt or no salt at all. I always have no salt because yeah. I don't want to buy salt this late in the year. The world I, goes the opposite ways. I figure this time of year, you can just have the, uh, the snow will melt a, a day or two later. Oh, yes. So no, no sense for the salt. Put a nice little rug down. There you go. Party likes to keep extra rugs in his limousine service, right? You got to because cause, cause a lot of people, hey, we, we go through a lot of filth out there and walk on these streets. So keep the, keep the floors clean, Larry. Now tell us one thing about Party Time Limousine Service. Well, okay, Party limousine, Time Limousine Service is a service that I provide where, hey, if you want to go out and ha- you want to go out to town, you know, go to a concert. Sporting event. Well, guess what? You can ride a nice, clean vehicle, which you would call, you know who. Now, I can vouch for that. Party's limousine is always spotless, always clean. Yes. Always classy. Oh, well, you got to keep it classy and professional. Yeah, professional. And then Party, exactly. You know, he's a party animal in himself there, and that's your Twitter name, right? Twitter and also Instagram name. The party animal. Yes. But he also is a very uh, respectable driver, and you like to uh, entertain if you want. Yeah, and also, I follow the rules of the road. I saw him read the book once. Yes. So there you go. Party Time Limousine Services there. Oh, yes. And then if you need it, what's the address or what's the phone number for that? Area code is 773-680-6244. There you go. Party Time Limousine Services in the greater Chicagoland area. That's the guy to call. And when you call it, he'll answer directly. Yes. There's no middleman with you, right, Party? No. The only thing you're going to hear is the transportation. All right, we're here at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 North Halstead, and this is Irish Whiskey Fest, and we'll be more with uh, back with Harrigan's right after this, so don't go away. No.
Welcome back to the Gentleman Grachowski Show. We're sitting here at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 North Halstead. And my special guest today is Mabel Fleming. Mabel Fleming is a stand-up comedian and more. And one of the things she does is she's a co-host of Flebby Hoffman's Radio Extravaganza on uh, Q4 Radio. And another thing, she also teaches uh, stand-up comedy and stuff like that. So let's just jump into what really, you know, Mabel, you're about. Tell us about what got you involved in comedy. Well, what really got me involved in comedy was... I always, as a child, wanted to make people laugh. Okay. You know, I always felt there was so much down in the world, so why exactly. can't I be that person to lift up? And plus, I came from Homeland Security, so <laughs> okay, you see a lot, and it makes you want to just help the world by doing a little comedy. Well, people don't realize out there, there's, there's so much to be grateful for and, and yes. have fun and enjoy life, yes. and people tend to always look at the glass being half empty instead yes. of the glass that's half full. Yes. You know, every day waking up, and especially born here in America, you don't realize the gift that we're given. Yes. But with a comedian, especially in like stand-up comedy, what you do, you have to have that extra little bit of a drive, right? Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Tell us about that extra drive that you as a stand-up comedian have. Because, you know, you got to get up there on stage. Yeah. A lot of people don't like public speaking. Right. A lot of people are like, oh, you're taking pictures? I don't want to be in the picture. Right. People louder. How do you get the drive to get up on stage and, and perform? Well, I get the drag because that's what you want to do. It's got to be installed in you. And, yeah, I believe the glass is half full. Right. Because it's always room for more, and you can always do more. Right. So I always say, hey, I'm going to get up here and just make some jokes, have some fun, talk about my kids. That's most of my comedy is about okay. my life with my kids because I'm a mother of four. Okay. And I'm a single mother of four. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Part G, where's he at? We'll get him later, okay? We'll find him. We'll but find him. There you go. So, so, yeah, so go on. So uh, that's partly where my comedy comes from. I just want to see a little bit more happiness in the world. And there's so much happiness that, that people should have and enjoy out there. Yes. Now, uh, you go around, uh, you've, you've taught people comedy, right? Yes. What do you tell people when you're teaching them comedy? Because everybody comes in with their own little idea of what comedy is. Uh-huh. What do you tell them comedy is? Comedy to me is, it should be therapeutic. Okay. And also, it should be something you enjoy. No, that's just like any job you have. If you right. have a job that you don't enjoy, you're going to do a crap job at it. You're not going to put as much love and encouragement right. in it as you would if it's something you enjoy. So, the first thing I teach my students is, you have to enjoy this. You enjoy comedy. You have to enjoy telling stories. And don't be scared to get up there, you know. I've had nights when I bomb. It is, it's going to happen. You're going to have your bad days. Right. You know, but don't give up. Just be you and be be your own funny. And what's the key to getting back on the horse after you fall off maybe two, three times yeah. and you're like, I'm still not getting this comedy. What do you What do you recommend? I recommend you really going in and digging deep into your own life stories. Okay. Like things that actually happen to you that are funny because everyone is funny. Like I tell my students, everyone is funny. You just have to find your own creative funny. Creative funny. Tell us about working with Flabby Hoffman. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's my buddy. I love Flabby. I love him. He just opened up a store, the uh, Flabby Hoffman Exploratorium at 2800 North Milwaukee. Okay. And, oh, my God, it's it's crazy. <laughs> All the little gag gifts you want, right? Right yes, there. I literally bought a um, a flat earth, but it's a globe. Okay. But it's square. And it, he just has so many gag gifts that it's, it's a nice place to visit. Okay. And it's a major golf course there, too. I gotcha. We're sitting here with Mabel Fleming, uh, and she is the... Uh, co-host of with Flabby and the Flabby Hoffman Extravaganza, and she's a lot more to her. We're going to find out some more information about her. Uh, you'll be back with another interview right now, right? Oh, yeah. I'll be back after this. We'll stay more with, more with uh, Mabel. Coming right after this. Welcome back to the Gentleman Grachowski Show. We're here at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 North Halstead. And I have a special guest here, Mabel Fleming. She is a stand-up comedian, entertainer, and she's a co-host with Flabby Hoffman on Q4 Radio, yes. the Flabby Hoffman Extravaganza. Extravaganza, darling, extravaganza. Now, you say you're an entertainer. Tell us about some other things that you do. Uh, well, I also do uh, co-hosting. Yeah. I co-host shows. I have even produced my own show. Okay. Um... 
I do um, theater comedy, theater um, acting. I also do um, camera acting. You know, I'm yeah. an actress also. Um, I do it all. Like okay. I do everything. What do you think, Vogue? Ew. <laughs> Vogue with a Michael Vogue with the best. I can do it. Now with tell us about your acting. What, yes. What? What made you like like acting? Because stand-up comedy is different from acting. Yes. It's totally like a- totally. Tell different. us what acting. You know how that how it's different to you. Well, it's different to me because you actually have to go with lines. You have to go with a script. Right. Versus when I'm doing stand-up or improv, it's whatever I want to do. Right. You make I the script. Say. Yeah. I make my script so. I always want to challenge myself to do more and better. Right. So when they said, we're going to put you into acting, I was like, okay, let's see what we're going to do. There you go. That's all you can do, right? That, right. You yeah. can test yourself, you know, and I actually liked it. So I kept going with it. Well, that's a good thing. And then, and then just being a comedy teacher of a stand-up comedy, mm-hmm. you could use that to help uh, motivate yourself as an actor, right? You're an actress. Yes. yes. I help motivate myself. As an actress, and I also help motivate my cast. Yeah. Because sometimes the cast be, you know, down in the dumps. I'm like, right. come on, y'all, we can, you can do this, you know, just a little motivation. Right. You, you gotta know? keep them, keep them going. Yeah, keep them motivated. Yeah. Cause that's the one thing is people don't realize, even though you got the script in front of you, you still yeah. have to have energy. Yes. Even if it's a bad or a, a slow scene, there's still yes. energy that people don't realize you have to bring to the scene. Yes. And how many times as being an actress, you'll sit there and you're like. I don't have it in me, but once the camera rolls, it it clicks right on. It's literally like a light switch for me. Yeah. Once it comes on, it's like flip. All right, it's time to work. I all of a sudden get that energy when they say cut. Okay, I'm tired. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it's the give and take. You got to sacrifice a little something to get what you want. Exactly, I understand how that is. And uh, what's it like? Uh, tell us about working with Flabby Hoffman. <laughs> Flabby is fun. He's so intelligent and creative that people just don't see how. Oh yeah, he's just in- intelligent. He is, and even though he comes off whimsical and just like a groovy dude, but he's very intelligent and very smart. Exactly. Uh, you know, one one man that's been on Part uh, on Flabby's show many times. I've been on several times. Yes. But one man that's been on it uh, a couple of times more than myself is Part T Wesley. Come Yay! here, my friend, Party. Come back here. How are you? Tell, yeah. tell us about your experience being on uh, uh, Flabby's show. Oh, man, Flabby lets it out. Yeah. Fl- Flabby's one of those type of guys where he don't think about it, mm-hmm. it just comes out of his mouth. He's like, droop. Yep. It, it, it's, it's like it rolls off the tongue. Mm-hmm. No, he's, he's a cool guy, honestly. And, and tell us about some of the gag, the gag gifts you got from Flabby. Oh, my goodness. One time he gave me, it was a, uh, it was a New York Giants towel. Okay. <laughs> and the reason why he gave me, and I didn't realize how good it was until I got the towel. Since I'm always losing on lottery tickets, uh, I can wipe out my tears away with it. Oh, <laughs> hey, it works. It was a giant loss. If you get, I know there are always those gag gifts he gives you. Oh man, yeah, but Flabby's a good. No, honestly, Flabby's a great guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. And he's been on the air so long. Yes. He knows what he's doing. There you go. And one one people that also know what they're doing is Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 yes. North Halstead. And uh, we're here at uh, Irish Whiskey Fest here celebrating it right now. Yes. And uh, Mabel Fleming, Mabel, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you? You can uh, get in touch with me at Facebook at Ms. Mabel Fleming, M-Z-M-A-B-E-L-F-L-E-M-I-N-G at Facebook. Or you can follow me on Instagram at Mayday Mayhem, M-A-Y-D-A-Y underscore M-A-Y-H-A-I-M. So cool. Very good. All right, Mabel Fleming, there you go. Party Wesley, party time. Yes. Oh, yeah. And this is yes. Gentleman Gretzowski Show. We're here at Harrigan's at Halstead 2816 North Halstead. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Gentleman Gertzowski Show. I'm sitting here with John Babin. John Babin is a singer-songwriter here in Chicago, and he's just getting out um, to, the, to the north side, we'll say. He's a very long uh, south side uh, Chicago White Sox fan, and we had a conversation today, and he was going to wear, uh, we're in the north side here at Harrigan's 2816 North Halstead, and uh, John was going to wear a White Sox uh, pr- uh, shirt, I believe you wanted to originally wear, uh, and I texted him, and I said, I don't think it's a good idea. 
I'm glad you didn't. It's it's underneath this shirt, just okay. so you know, if it needs to come out. Well, it doesn't need to come out here, <laughs> not, especially not on this show. Hey, I, I don't discriminate, so there you go. I'm just a sax fan. Thank you. Now, you, uh, you're you a singer-songwriter here in Chicago, and uh, you're also a, um, you play guitar. And what other instruments do you play? Well, I actually started on violin, and then I moved to drums for a number of years, and I decided to pick up the guitar and start singing. How do you go from violin to drums? Lots of years. <laughs> What, what about violin? I mean, did mom make you play violin, or how did that start? Mom and dad, they put me into violin lessons. Uh, instead of preschool, they decided I should just take some violin lessons, and I loved it. Okay. I wrote my first song on there, and uh, very young, but uh, then I decided to be a rock and roller and play some drums. Now, a lot, I think people don't realize a lot of uh, violin music is played with Irish music, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, so with your love for Irish music and your influence of Irish music, you happen to have the, the violin doesn't seem like that far-fetched because a lot of times we hear violin we think of something slow you know but actually violin like you know uh, there was a song that went down to georgia yeah. he was looking for a soda steel by the way anyways not a slow song yeah <laughs> but they were able to really rock with, it, with a it. violin and that's what a lot of irish music do does absolutely. is they rock with a violin absolutely yeah there's a they, uh, mandolins violins um i said violins not violence no and um, there's, yeah, they use a lot of stringed instruments, acoustic instruments that make everything sound, uh, you know, when everything's going together and it starts rocking, that's when you know it's good. And you could also get a nice balladeer crooning song with Irish music too as well, which I'll probably play a little later on today. But. Okay, now when you, when you went to starting with the drums, uh, you, did mom, mom was heartbroken or what? <laughs> no, no. It was years after I had done violin. And, uh, actually, they, uh, they, they were uh, happy about it. They, okay. Uh, I was, we were at Toys R Us, which is a forgotten thing. But uh, we what's were, that? What's that? Yeah, right. We were at Toys R Us. I remember Rust. something called Child World back in the day. Mm, that is uh, above my head. Yeah, <laughs> that was my favorite store actually. There was just a drum set that had all these like little '90s characters on it, like one you know, all doing like the I don't know. They were all hanging out. Yeah, exactly. And I thought that's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. Like, that's, and, and so my mom was like, "All right." And then all of a sudden, Christmas Day, Santa brought it. So. Oh, Santa! How did he know? I don't know. So you went, started, then went into drums, yes. and how did you get into guitar and really real song, not real songwriting, but how did you get into guitar songwriting or acoustic songwriting or John whatever Lennon. they call it? John Lennon. He died a long time ago, though. Uh, he did, but uh, he still lives on. Okay. Uh, so it, at least he did in my house and does uh, to this day. Now, what about John Lennon and his style of music that you like? And what about Paul McCartney? He was a Beatle, too, you know. I do know. Um, it was uh, the realisticness uh of what the Beatles were as a four-piece band. Right. Um, Paul hero of mine John also a hero George Ringo all of them um, but uh, yeah I mean, there's just something about some of hearing John's like demo tapes and like some of his later solo stuff that I thought wow that sounds so real and so to the heart and who was the walrus the walrus was Paul <laughs> <laughs> but tell us more about uh, your uh, music now the music now uh, well yeah I played uh, mostly original music uh, with my original band uh, we write songs we play all over Chicago uh, and uh, internationally as well. We just got back from Nashville quite a, uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so we, we, we get out there, and, uh, and as far as myself, I play pretty much locally solo when I'm not doing the full right. band thing, especially around the March or, uh, you know, spring time. Yes, you know, uh, spring time's a great time for music in Chicago. And your website? My website, well, uh, you can find us at leverband.com, or you can just find me at johnbabbin.com. Johnbabbin.com. And always remember, if you need a, a great guy, especially on the north side here, this is the guy to go to, uh, John Babbin. And then, hey, uh, I live on the north side. It's all good. There you go. <laughs> and we're here at Harrigan's on Halstead, 2816 North Halstead. We'll be back with some more um, uh, John's music right after this, but don't go away. Hello everybody, my name is John Babbin. I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I'm going to play a song right now that I wrote. Uh, it's an original song. You can find it on Spotify under my full band's name called Lever. Just want to say have a happy March and have a happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you're enjoying the whiskey today.
but no time to cry Everybody dies Reach your horizon at tea I live for the day Lift my head and say I had my fun while I was here 